grabbing and now it's uh, it's starting up and we should be any moment now um, uh, broadcasting out to the, the great unwashed out there um, we would also like a call from other people not just uh, not just uh, uh, Josh he's the only one here tonight didn't that bother you about the did you watch the newscasts at all yeah Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 not just uh, not just any movie. That stupid movie, you know. No, oh, I'm. No. No, that's correct. But, I mean, the thing that bothered me was just that you have 22 minutes and you just spent, uh, what was it, what did I say, uh, about, about, I'll give him four minutes, but I could have sworn it was five, showing this trailer and plugging a movie your company owns, you know, which sucks. Hey, we've been joined by other people. First of all, Rick Horn. Hello, Rick. Yeah, turn your camera on and off again, will you? Because you're not coming through there. And Patrick, you should do the same thing because uh, you're not showing up right now. You're there though, aren't you, Patrick? Yes, he is. Looks like you. If you is that is that a Death Star as a ball gag that you're wearing in that photograph? Hi, uh, Rick. We can see you now. Yeah, that that's that's kind of. Uh, oh, here we go. Patrick's coming in. That's a, w w w is that an actual ball gag, or did you make that up yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yes. Who originated them? I didn't know we had game shows on GabNet. Oh yes, yes, of course, with the with the, with, the, with the trivia. Yeah, absolutely. But by the way, we're losing Mark here. What what's happening to Mark? He's got a little connection problems. Uh, Mark, uh, you might try. Uh, I don't know, just calling back in again. Yeah, it blew the whole uh, the whole thing. And now we're losing Mark Thorner. What the hell is going on here? Huh. Yeah, here comes Tony. Probably going to have his dog with him this evening. Hi, Tony. Yeah, I can hear you, Tony. And she's sleeping. Thank God for that, because then we don't have to hear about the goddamn fucking dog. Uh... uh uh, you're a new, you're a new father. Well, you know we do we do see Rob's cat every now and then, right, Rob? That is one plush cat, by the way. Yeah, now that's a that's a you say a rag doll. Yeah, now they can they don't walk that well, do they? Or they don't? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. I'm glad we got that set up. And I love the fact that we've got Rick there and half his wife. Uh, there, there we go, see, because tonight is, of course, uh, the night we go on the TV. And uh, uh, so everybody should see your, your lovely poem. It's probably something in the preferences. If 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 Miranda were here, she could solve the problem for you. 
Huh? It, sh it should be pretty simple. It, yeah, well, um, uh, you might go into the settings for just the microphone itself. Uh, and, uh, you mean uh, in your preferences and stuff like that? Not, 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 not in the s Skype preferences. And are you getting audio that way? Okay, well. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, I don't know what to tell you, but if Miranda were here, Mar I'll tell you, last night she opened up her program with uh, about 20 minutes of geekdom, right? That had me completely enthralled. I mean, I, I, uh, I, if she's listening, it was, it was a brilliant, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 amount of time there that, I, that we were spending with you, because she, she kept talking about how we had been talking about sex, which in my case it was the beginning of the show, that was it. Uh, in Albert's case, it was I think the whole show, and so she started talking about numbers kind of being sexy to her, and uh, I just, I was enthralled by it. I was just. Uh, Absolutely amazed by it. By the way, uh, Rob, good job of doing a game show. What? Like the contestants didn't know shit. That was probably it. Yeah. That's all, that's all you had for the evening. Yeah, Mark, Mark keeps bleeping in and bleeping out. I don't know what's wrong with Mark's uh, connection tonight. I know everything. You look great tonight too, uh, Mark. Uh, but anyway, you still do you have any? Did you have any questions left that maybe I could answer? Yeah, now these were, uh, oh yes, uh, Patrick. On the live stream, uh, okay, let me, uh, let me see here. You can hear me, but nobody else, on, no, but this is on the live stream. Uh, so I have to go to, uh, where is it? Oh, damn it! Uh, where am I on this thing? Preferences. Where the? Oh, there's the mixer. Okay, there's a mixer. Well, you guys talk for a second. Uh, somebody talk. Uh, oh, okay. I think I. Okay. Oh. Uh huh. I'm t Here we go. Uh, uh, there we go. Everybody can hear now. Now the the oh, this is a twelve year old scotch. Hear, so, uh, hey I mean, Phil, uh, uh, and, and are those Beats headphones? I see you have on. Uh, yeah, they are. Are they any good? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know all the basketball players. They they always show them warm up uh, walking to the thing room. But they probably but, pay him money to wear them. It must, yeah. But, I, I've always seen the people on the train with them on. It's pretty, they're pretty popular. Yeah. I but, think Apple bought the company. I'm not sure. Yes, yeah, they did. Apple they bought did. the company and Bose is suing them. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah Bose. Get my coffee, Bose. Yeah, but Bose is suing them. Okay, I got the audio going. Yeah, you see, today, uh, Livestream sent a, a new uh, a version of their producer. So you had to reset everything, and I forgot to put in this stuff. You know, but now they can hear you, and not just me. Uh, so where were we? Oh yeah, uh, and to all the TV people, I'm sorry. Uh, let, let, let's see here, Rob. Yeah, we'll get this show going eventually, folks. Uh, but the slower I can take to get there, the closer it is to midnight, and then it's all over. Uh, anyway, Rob, what? 
What? Uh, it just give give me one. Let me try to answer it. Okay. All right. So uh, this one is. Uh, uh, let's see. Clue number one. I was born in Glen Willard, Pennsylvania, in 1943. Clue number two. I was born with the name Luigi Gino Sacco. Looney, Lu, Lu, what is it? Gino Sacco. Uh, well, I, no, it wouldn't be him because I think he was born in New York. I was thinking of somebody like Paul Anka or... Not Paul the, Anka. Or, you know, one of those Italian types. Well, let me give you another clue. Okay. I went to the Moon Township High School where I studied classical music and vocal technique. Oh, it's uh, Pavarotti. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? Uh, yeah, a any, anybody that. else here have an idea? I, I, I have a guess. Go ahead. What, yeah. Sonny Bono? No. No. While in high school, I sang with a group called The Classics. Oh, I remember them. I don't know if it's the same Classics. No, it probably wasn't. But it's all this bleeping going on here. Someone's, uh, it sounds like Facebook. Number five from nineteen. Oh, oh, it's it is by Facebook. Oh, it might be yours, because Jim wrote, uh, or helicopters in Harlem starring Rudy Ray Moore. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, okay. Give me the latest clue. From nineteen fifty nine to nineteen sixty two, I recorded with various local acts for several small Pittsburgh labels. Uh, okay, I think we're getting to somebody like Bobby Rydell, or or Ch wasn't Chubby Checker? That's, he, he, that's not a black name. Uh, and for six in October of 1963, I had my first two hits. My trademark became the quavery falsetto style popularized by Del Shannon and Frankie Valley. Now that uh, Frankie Valley though was not. Uh, he it's was not falsetto in the early days. What? He was falsetto in his early days. In so his since, early days. Yeah, this is this guy made his, his, his bones with some falsetto. Huh. Huh. Hmm. Not Bobby Sherman. Mm. Well, these are these are real tough clues. Number seven, after my release from the army in nineteen sixty six, with lightning speed I signed with MGM Records striking my most famous hit song which sold over two million two million copies okay mgm um god uh the lightning strikes uh christie yeah, yeah. yeah it's am Lou i Lou right Lou, Lou christie Lou christie i did it <laughs> as, soon, as soon as you said mgm i i i knew it um I, I couldn't remember the name. I could remember the song, and then when I said the name of the song, all of a sudden, Lou Christie hit me. How many people here even remember Lou Christie? I went to school with him. Did you really? Yeah. With his grandson. Mark, Lou Christie is, is an old man. What do you mean you went to school with him? Uh, maybe, maybe I'm kidding. Oh, maybe you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't do that. I had a Lou Christie lunchbox. Now, of course, Mark Thorner would remember Lou Christie. <laughs> and uh, Rob, do you remember Lou Christie? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Uh, and Josh, Lou Christie? No clue, bro. Really? How about uh, Mark uh, Beaumont, who's having a hard time uh, tonight getting a picture to us? But uh, Mark, do you remember Lou Christie? Oh, he, well, he's not even getting sound out. He had some pretty... Yeah, sorry about that. Oh, I surely do not. Oh, okay. We, well, we can hear you now, at least. Uh, you having some kind of uh, problems there with your uh, your bandwidth and stuff? Mark? Mark? What was that? Sorry, that was us. Oh, that was you guys. Oh, she's still trying to get her thing she on. Got, right? She got it working. So. She, she, oh, uh, so you're going to call us? No, no, I'm going to take up a panel spot. <laughs> I'm letting Wynn know. She's been helping. Yeah? Okay, well, you know, uh, uh, actually what we should do is start customer support and hire Miranda to do that. You know, she can just uh, do that. You want to try one more? Let me try one more. You got one more at all there, uh, yeah, Rob? Yeah, I got hundreds of them. 
Let me pick a good one. You could just have Miranda do it for the same salary she currently makes if you want to fit the modern day. Uh, listen, I will double. Her, I will double her salary. How's okay. that? <laughs> An unlimited vacation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. By the way, do you like my wants. idea, by the way, Rob, of, of giving away prizes, but it's an IOU if the company ever makes it? <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And how about just a virtual prize, you know, picture of a car. Uh, <laughs> you know, picture of a car. Uh, 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 yeah. And, and then you could do all the, the thing you love doing the most, which is, and a brand new car. <laughs> yeah. They never can say, and by the way, uh, it's a brand new car over there. Yes. Oh, it's a brand new car. I would love to. Do you know? You, well, you know something. I, I said I, one of the other shows I watch sometimes is The Price Is Right, and whenever they don't have a prize, uh, they give away a brand new car. <laughs> they, they've got like these cars probably stored up in their warehouse somewhere. You know. Okay, you're ready for one. Okay. I was born in 1950. Mm-hmm. My third single release. My third single released went to number one. Those are the first two clues. It was born in 1950. So, uh, 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 64. Huh? He's 64. He's 64. Yeah. Uh, 19, it went to number one. His third single, right. His third single. He was born in 1950. How old was he, I wonder, when he had his first hit? Ah, uh, that would give away the year his hit. In 1970, I would say 20. Uh, uh, well, I mean, if, if he was born in 1950, we could say 1968, somewhere around in there. Right. That's wrong. Earlier. Huh? Okay. Earlier. Give that? it away if I say it. Oh, okay. Go to go to the next clue. Number three. I toured the United States in 1972 with the Rolling Stones. Oh. Oh. You're gonna get oh. this out. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What year were the Rolling Stones? 72. Ooh, wow. He, jeez, I, I'm still drawing a blank here. Four, I have received at least 15 Grammy Awards. Oh, wait. This ain't no slouch. Uh, no, no slouch at all. <laughs> uh, 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 was it was somebody maybe with Motown? Could it be like Stevie Wonder? It is Stevie Wonder. Yeah, you got it. That's a good one. It is Stevie Wonder. That was good. How about that? Now, he put out an album with nothing. Here's a trivia question for you. He put out an album with uh, in which all, it was just a musical album. It was just an instrumental album in which he just played the harmonica. Hmm. And he didn't do it under the name Stevie Wonder. Oh, I've heard this. What name did he do it under? Yeah, I've heard this. I've heard this trivia question. That's even better. I like that. Da, 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 da. By Don't the way, uh, do we violate the, the Millennium Copyright Act if we hum it, the hum a song? No, but uh, it was a great album too. I might add, one of my favorites. I, you know what? I don't know where I heard this, but I have heard this question. I cannot mm. think of it. Anybody else know? Eve, it's red now. Back, Stevie Wonder backwards. That's what it was. Stevie Wonder backwards. That's cool. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's it. I. <laughs> yeah, they put out this album with Steve. It's red now, and mm -hmm. everybody immediately when they heard it knew it was Stevie Wonder because you can tell that harmonica. Yeah. I saw him live at Radio City Music Hall, back in the very early '80s. Great show, amazing. Early on, uh, he was a friend of mine. Oh wow! He, he got to be a friend of mine. I'll tell you, this, I'll tell you some, a couple of stories here. You like my stories, don't you? Love them. You better love them. You better love my stories because I'm going to keep telling them anyway. It's all I got left as an old man. <laughs> I'll, I'll be sitting around at 85. Going, hey, remember my stories about Stevie Wonder? Well, like, what happened? Tell the story. Yeah. Um, apparently, the live stream volume yeah. for the panel needs to be put up a bit. Okay. <laughs> this is the only way I can do the show here is by having. Uh, it needs to go up a bit. Okay. Now, it, it, I, I got a match it from, from another listener. Yeah. Okay. He, um, they're, okay. They're fine, but we're not. Well, well, it's it's up. It's at 1.3 dB, which means it's higher than me. Okay. Okay. And, and that's the way it is. And I ain't going any higher. How's that? And that means there's two listeners out there. 
Uh, uh, no, uh, let me look here. Uh, no, there are three. Actually, what happens is when we go to the uh, to the live stream, uh, we start getting a lot of people on the live stream and get less people listening to the audio uh, that we're doing now. So it's uh, it's kind of strange. Anyway, where are we? Let me uh, also to my Stevie Wonder story. Uh, uh, he was. Um, uh, he, I got a call. I was doing the show here in New York City, and I got a call from one of the one of the people who promotes people, and said, uh, "Would you like to have Stevie Wonder on your on your show?" And I said, "No." Hmm. And they said, "Why?" And I said, "I made it a policy for years now not to have anybody on from Motown." And the reason was that years before, Motown had stiffed me real bad. It wasn't on a radio program. You stiff somebody on a radio program, hey, I'll just play a record, right? Mm -hmm. But you stiff somebody when they're doing a TV show, and now you've created a pocket, and the Supremes were supposed to show up, and they didn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, I put it completely on the back of the Motown people. By the way, it was also a time when I... When I made one of my biggest faux pas ever on radio, I went on the air the next day and I told people that uh, uh, I didn't, uh, the, you know, the Supremes didn't show up and they, I'd been promised emphatically that they were going to show up on this TV show that we were doing, you know, do the lip sync thing and all of that crap, right? And uh, I said, and, and they're nothing but reneggers on a promise. <laughs> and I suddenly realized what I had said. And I didn't mean it that way. You're lucky Shopton wasn't around. No, I know. I'd be, uh, you know, I'd be having to apologize for something I didn't even mean to say. Oh, yeah, they would have just fired you nowadays. Hi, we got Mark okay now. He, he looks good. He, he's using, like, I think a three chip broadcast camera there because it's, uh, it's a great job. And somebody said the lighting is terrific. I said, you used to do that for a living. Anyway, anyway, had so to reset the uh, the modem a couple of times. So somebody, so this person said to me, well, "Why do you make a policy of not having anybody on from Motown?" And I told them the story about how I had been really screwed by them once, and I just didn't want to have anything to do with them anymore. And he said, "Well, you know something, you'd be doing exactly that if you had Stevie on." And I said, "Why is that?" And they said. He just, you know, he'd been with that label since he was 13, and everybody ever signed a, a, a contract with Motown signed for like about 10 years. So for a lot of people, it was their whole career practically, you know, because many times, how many, how long do you keep having hits? But this kid grew up and was still having hits and outlived the contract, the length of the contract. So when he signed a new contract, he signed an independent contract with Motown, which Motown had never, ever done with anybody, in which he had the right to pick his music, he had the right to pick the studios he worked out of, he had the right to pick his producers. Uh, and uh, the person told me, now he's got to go out and promote this album that he's recorded. And he... Um, uh, the, the Motown is doing everything to try and screw them over. They're not doing any promotion on the album. They want him to come crawling back to them on his hands and knees and saying, please, I, I'll, I'll sign the kind of contract you want. So if you have him on, you'll be helping him. So I said, when can you send him over? <laughs> and I had him on. And he remembered this favor. That because right after that, this album became a smash, uh, and it was the first album he had apart from Motown. It was on the Motown label. Tamala, but, right? Uh, it, well, I, yeah, I think it was Tamala Motown. I think maybe he was on Tamala at, at one time, and then later on maybe to Motown. In any event, uh, he kind of looked upon me as a good luck charm. That. If he came on my show and played an album first, or a song first, on my show, it would be a hit. So the first, so one morning I'm sitting there, and uh, they, we get a call from downstairs, and they said, uh, somebody's here to see you, uh, 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 Stevie Wonder? And I said, yes, let Mr. Wonder in. And he came up to the studio, and he had an acetate. You know what an acetate is, Rob. 
yeah. was it it's like a temporary recording you can play them about 10 times before they fall apart right but what you would do is if you worked in a studio and you want to make a copy to take home with you and listen to or have other people listen to you made an acetate before you left they would they literally cut the record and he had an acetate and we put it on and um that was the first time that the world ever heard you were the sunshine of my life. Wow. Uh, and uh, what was it? What Houston? Was, huh? Was that in Houston? No, this was in New York. Uh, oh, okay. You're the sunshine of my life. And then uh, um, uh, the other song he played me that he had a, a, a thing of was uh, Superstition. Oh, great song. And, and it was the first time anybody ever heard it. I know I can say that because he had just come from the studio recording it. Wow. And they became sensational hits. So he would now like call me up at three o'clock in the morning with calls like, "Hey Alex, uh, what are you doing right now? I'm on the air, right?" I said, "Oh, I'm on the air." He says, "Well, listen, if I bring the car by, I, I want to take you out for a drive." <laughs> what he used to like to do was to go out to a parking lot, a huge parking lot, and get behind the wheel of a car and drive in a circle. Because, he, you know, it was the only way he could drive. He wanted to take me driving. And I said, I think I'll pass on that one. <laughs> the last time I ever saw Stevie, and I, I think this was one of my great moments, was uh, uh, at some party that I went to, and all of a sudden Stevie shows up. And, and Stevie uh, has his entourage with him, walks right past me. And a little bit later in the evening, I go up to Stevie and I say, Stevie, and he says, yeah. I says, Alex. He says, oh, Alex, hi. Great to he I haven't heard from you in a while. I said, yeah, I mean, we just haven't we have crossed paths. I said, but, you know, you've really, I think it's that you've just gotten to be a big, uh, too big for your britches. He says, what do you mean? I said, I'm standing there when you walk in and you didn't even recognize me. <laughs> And that's the last time I ever saw Stevie, not because of what I said, but because I guess our paths just never kind of crossed again. What but, is he doing today? When was the last time he released any music? You know, he's been living on reputation. You know, I don't know what happens to people. Uh, and I've never had it completely explained to me, but there are these people and they have like 20 hits in a row and all of a sudden they don't have a hit anymore. Now, how does that happen? I mean, if you learned how to write 20 hits, you should know how to write the 21st. Yeah, I think you do. I think what happens is um, the public changes. But if changes like play. But changes just like that? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a guy. Know, I'll give you a guy. Instance. I'll give you a guy who had so many hits it was, it, 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 it was unbelievable. And uh, when you think about it, you can go look at the list, and it's a long list. Huey Lewis. Yeah. All of a sudden... Huey Lewis doesn't have hits anymore, doesn't have songs anymore, doesn't do anything anymore. Do you think they get bored? Maybe. No. Be, I'll, I'll give you another one. Bi Billy, stuff. Bi I'll give you another one. Billy Joel. He doesn't play. Oh, oh, he ABC plays. News had, had Billy Joel on as their person of the week this week, and they said that he hadn't released an album in 20 years, <laughs> yeah. and that he still, he still uh, sells out concert halls. Yeah, but you, what, you're doing, what you're doing, what you're doing... Is you're surviving on fumes, you 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 know you're surviving on your past. He's done some classical stuff. He he says he has no more pop in him. Do you think he's, they he's, like, do you think they dry up, Alex? And like he's saying, he happens is, they have nothing left to say. Yeah, that's exactly what, right. Because you know, after you write about your you write about your life, you write about people that mean things to you. You're not as young anymore. You want to start writing about Metamucil, maybe I don't know. Mm -hmm. You get to a certain point in life where you know, you just you say I'm I'm done with this. I'm I'm moving. So he does classical stuff now. It's what he's into. I haven't heard him do classical stuff. Who Billy yeah. Joel? Yeah, he's he's, he's produced. He's written a, a, like some symphonies, that kind of thing. Oh really? Well, yeah, that's I, what uh, he's into. We're all listening to them. Uh, well, I don't think he's them out there for you to listen yeah, to but, because but, you know that's yeah. the issue. I, I'll give you for instance, uh, back in the early. Now, maybe 2003, yeah. I was working at um, the number one adult contemporary station on Long Island, WALK. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was talking to the PD one day, the program director, and he says to me, he's just, I was in his office and we were mm -hmm. sitting there just, just shooting the shit. Yeah. And he says to me, uh, you know, we got a, we got, we got a, 
Barry Manilow's people contacted us, and he would do a private concert for us. Yeah. If we just play his single, his new single. So he played me his single. And I said, so why wouldn't you play it? It's Barry Manilow. It sounds just like Mandy and every other Barry Manilow single. And he says, uh, you can't play Barry Manilow anymore. You know, it just doesn't work here. I But the guy will give you a free concert, you know? Yeah, yeah but, but you know you know who was the brightest guy in the world? Had to be Tony Bennett's son. Why would he do? When, when he took Tony Bennett, this, the, at the time uh, he was in his 70s, and got him on MTV. Made him a sensation. Got a young audience listening to him. Mm -hmm. uh, and that took some doing. Uh, and I, I don't even know who the guy was at MTV, but Stepping Out With My Baby was, was a hit on the pop charts. You know. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, you know, like uh, Johnny yeah. Cash shortly before he died. He, he put out uh, an album and, uh, you know, it was kind of, that's kind of a good marketing thing to do well the thing with tony him. bennett is he had kept doing albums i mean when we talk about billy joel not i didn't know he didn't do an album for 20 years right you know but if that's the case uh fuck him <laughs> you know <laughs> well i mean i know his mother just said on the radio i was gonna work mother passed away. Away. his mother passed away 92 yeah well, was, we could, yeah. well you know yeah and and her dying deathbed yeah. words were uh, why haven't you released an album in 20 years? He actually wrote the song Rosalita's Eyes, I think, for her. For his mother. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was going to say that he's not just should uh, inspire more music. I can respect that he doesn't release any more music if he feels that he, he's just not writing on the laurels of his name. Putting out yeah. What do you mean not writing on the laurels of his name? He's doing a concert a month that he signed <laughs> yeah. a contract at uh, Madison it. Square Garden. But people love it. They can't get enough of Billy Joel and his music. So why not do the concerts? Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I mean there are guys who say, "I'm not going. I'm I'm retiring now. It, it's time to retire." One guy who did recently, and I thought it was disappointing, was Elton John. I like him because he, uh, that album he did with Leon Russell right was now. one of the best albums he's ever turned out. Did you hit that one on the head, Alex? That's how I turned on to you. Mentioned on serious. Yeah. I mean, Isn't it a lot more work to do concerts than it is to go into the studio? No. Or money <laughs> in the concerts. The money, money's in the concerts, but the thing is, a concert isn't as difficult because you, it's a different situation altogether. But you're, you know, you're having, with the album, you're having to write material, you're having to produce that material, uh, have each song be its own entity. Uh, so the, that's a strong creative process. Uh, a concert is simply repetition. You go out there, you do the same set you did last night. You know, everybody wants to hear you know uh, this song or that song, and if you don't do it, they get very disappointed. Uh, I'll tell you, the best concert I ever saw in my life was Elton John uh, at the at the uh, uh, at the Mini Stadium in Barcelona, Spain, during the Olympics. Uh, and I, I, you know, I had always gone, oh, uh, I was the first guy ever to interview Elton John in America. He had just come over, he was on, still on James, uh, the, Rick, uh, what was the name of, not Rick James, but uh, uh, there was this guy James in England who had a label, and it was the first label that Elton John was ever on. And they brought him over here, and I had him on uh, this show, a Saturday night show I used to have with a bunch of other people. I think he was on with Alice Cooper. As a matter of fact, wow! Uh, wow. And 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 <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we'd have these amazing combinations that would come in. But he, uh, um, uh, I, uh, I, I didn't realize in the intervening years the amount of hits he's had. He had because he would keep having this hit and then that hit, and it was just Elton John was always around. But when you sit in a stadium and now he starts doing one hit after another, you go, oh yeah, and that one. And that one, and that one, and that one. Here comes Benny and the Jets, and that one. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. There's that one, you know. Uh, and and by the time he's through, this place was you could have lifted the stadium off the ground. It was it was that energetic, uh, and it was just one of the greatest concerts I've ever seen. And it is on video. Uh, yeah, the, his Barcelona concert, really just incredible. 
it's a shame he didn't take care of himself better because his voice he had many uh, at least one operation that i know of on his on his vo- on his vocal cords and uh he just is a shell of himself now when he sings well i still think he you know like that that yeah. that that, that uh, leon russell album he did was just it was two masters just uh it actually was the father and the son because leon russell was 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 elton john's hero uh mark you have something you want to say here one of the best concerts I ever saw was the Piano Men with Elton John and Billy Joel. I saw them too. That yeah. I thought yeah. was one of the best combination concerts. Um, didn't mind paying the ticket price. Went home very happy. Yeah. How, how much was the ticket price? Do you remember? For what I paid, it must have been like a hundred bucks. Yeah. I paid two fifty. I sat like in the eleventh row. Oh wow! Well, yeah. yeah uh, uh, yes. I, Teresa. I sat in the nosebleed section and paid sixty bucks, but it was excellent. I saw it twice, yeah. same concert twice. Uh, anybody here? Uh, uh, maybe I'm probably the only one in the room. See, ever see the Beatles live? Wow, oh, my sister. Live. <laughs> huh? My you sister did at Shea Stadium. Ed Sullivan count? <laughs> the, 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 well, no, that's t- that's that's TV. You're not actually there, Mark. Damn. What yeah. did you see? Huh? Which show did you see, Alex? Houston, Texas. Really? What year? Uh, we were, I worked at KILT in Houston, Texas in 19, uh, yeah, about 65, maybe 66. Uh, and um, we held concerts, these, these summer concerts, you know. Uh, the, the radio station would actually co-promote them, but would put their name on them. And... Um, we uh, 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 we had uh, um, these concerts come in, and, and we did the Beatles. And uh, I didn't get to emcee it, but I did stand backstage while they were on. Uh, they, they just had the stage. I mean, it was amazing what they would go on stage with. A couple of amps with microphones pointed at them. And you couldn't hear anything. Right? And you couldn't hear anything because everybody was screaming, right? Yeah. And then at the end of it, they had they actually had them show up and take off in an armored car, right? <laughs> so as when they're through, they don't say goodbye. They just leave, right? <laughs> And and, I, and 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 the stage is just like the stage with a with a you know a little stairwell built in the back of it, and I had my hand on the stairwell and Ringo stepped on my hand. Ooh. So oh, it was it was this hand by the way, everybody. <laughs> Ringo stepped on this I haven't, hand. Haven't washed it. And it had to be Ringo of all beings. Now to right? show you what a stupid asshole <laughs> I was, okay. So uh, a, a couple of about the, the next year they did this series of concerts again, and uh, they wanted me to MC one of the concerts, and I said fine, which one? And uh, they told me, and I was really mad what? because they well they wanted me to do the Rolling Stones, and I wasn't a fan. Really. Uh, and I didn't think anybody really gave a shit about the Rolling Stones, which, if you think about it, back in those days, compared to the Beatles, compared to a lot of other groups that were having the one-hit yeah, wonders at the time, they really weren't. Yeah, you didn't know and they were going to last. Wh- what I really wanted, but they wouldn't let me MC, was the Herman Hermits concert. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I was forced. I was forced to MC the Rolling Stones. What? Isn't the guy from Herman's Hermits uh, a disc jockey on Sirius now and uh, six on sixties on six? Oh, Peter yeah. Noon. Peter Noon. Peter Noon. That's it. <laughs> Is Peter Noon doing? Uh, he's doing Sirius six on sixties uh, on six. Huh. Oh, there isn't a star over there they haven't fucked yet. <laughs> <laughs> a little bitterness. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a much better radio person than Jenny McCarthy, for crying out loud. I clicked about you today with Sirius. I was on the phone with them. They asked me, why are you canceling? And I told them. I said, uh, you know, they got rid of Alex. I said, you got rid of everything I listened to. You got rid of Alex Bennett. The entire Sirius left is gone, and I can't list progressive. I said, you're hiring kids, and they sound like kids. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and so what did the person on the other end say? Thank you very much for calling. 
<laughs> no, they, they they just keep lowering the price. Yeah, how how low did you get them to go? They got to pay us to listen. <laughs> it's twenty five dollars for six months. Oh, you could have done better. I, I just got oh, a twenty what, what? for five. Huh? Uh, I got a twenty for five. And, and, and you took it, you traitorous fuck. No, no, I was looking for it in the garbage <laughs> no. can. I was going to hold it up. <laughs> I couldn't find it. <laughs> By the way, speaking of his lousy Beats earphones, yeah. uh, did you see where Bose is suing them? They are. Yes, for the noise canceling. Supposedly they stole the noise canceling from Bose. These don't noise cancel. They don't. No, they suck. <laughs> what, what? What is it? What? Uh, uh, Rob, you're the radio guy. What? What are Beats earphones supposed to do? Never use them. So okay. I, I have my, Look at me, man. I'm I'm using the cousin Brucey earphones from 1965. They weigh a ton. Well, you know what I'm doing? I'm using I'm using my earbuds, which are etymotics, which are etymotics, which are really good. Uh, but I'm using these because during the uh, the hot weather, wearing the ones that cup on your ears, you get all sweaty and gooey and swampy in your head, and it's horrible. Now, but I, I was looking at new at new earphones, and there's a brand called Fostex, and they seem to be they've been around for awful. years. Yeah, but these. Uh, had some measurement of a 1.5 Tesla, and and they were fifteen hundred dollars. I wasn't buying any of them, but uh, and they were made in Japan, and the uh, exterior of it was cherry wood. Uh, but they're fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, it's the cherry and, was. Is, is that <laughs> you know, are, are those really really that much better than? Uh, no, the, they're uh, made. They they charge that much for them, so you'll think they're better. Yeah. And uh, actually, you know, you know what it is. I've worked in radio for longer than I care to even think. You know, if I think about it now, it's I've been on radio over sixty years. Wow! Uh, uh, and in all that Tony, that's not dog use. In all that time, <laughs> I've never cared what kind of earphones I had on my head. I I put my uh, uh, only once. I mean, it's at W O R uh, the couple of times ago. I used their earphones and they were terrible. They were just horrible. I just took them off and just, I worked kind of like, remember when you used to go nude swimming? That's how I felt. You know, I was naked. Uh, but normally I could care less about what kind of earphones I have on my head, just as long as I have some kind of reference to what's going on. You feel the same way, Rob? Or are, you, or are you particular? Are you finicky about earphones? I don't, you know, I've never used the station phones. I bought these a long time ago, and they work great. The only thing about them is they're like, they, after a while, they just, you know, I'm, I'm used to wearing them for 15, 20 seconds at a time. Yeah. You do music, constantly taking them off, putting them on, taking them off. Yeah. After, you know, you wear these things for hours, and after a while, they, they're just so heavy. So they're more music jock type headphones. Right. They're not really comfortable. I, I just, I don't know, I'm used to them, though, and... It's just, so it's what's comfort. what's good? Uh, is Stenhousers or uh, those Sen Grecos or? Uh, I have a pair of Stenhousers. I have a pair of Stenhousers over here. They're fine. You know, they're good. But I know for radio, when you do radio, you can't use like Sennheiser, especially the open mm -hmm. air ones, because they feed back into the microphone from all the processing on the stations mm -hmm. and the microphones. That's oh. kind of why I have these things, because every radio station I've ever worked at, you have to have closed ear. Or in a feedback like crazy. Well, I guess we better talk about some other stuff because uh, we have hardly any uh, audience. Is very audience low tonight. Yeah, down very very low, and then I combine it with the with the on the uh, the uh, the uh, what do you call it? The video people. The very few uh, video people there. So uh, we better uh, change the subject here. Uh, they, uh, uh, what was that? A dog in back of you there? Uh, yeah. What kind yeah. Of, what, yeah. He came in from uh, the patio. What kind of dog is that? Hey, Co it's he's a Belgian Shepherd. It looks Cody. like a, looks like oh. a dingo. <laughs> no, dingo, he's, right? a, uh, he's, yeah. he's a Belgian Shepherd. He's a really cool guy. Uh, yeah. Guess what? The, guess what the Republicans are up to? They want to impeach the president. Well, uh, uh, did yeah, they exactly. get rid of Morrissey in uh, in in Egypt? No. Uh, no. I saw in Al Jazeera no, that there was a they overthrew the uh, the president there as a new president unless that was old news. I didn't see anything about that. Yeah, it was Al Jazeera. No, uh, uh, the real news here was that Phil was watching Al Jazeera. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, it, uh, it said that <laughs> there was reactions from all the world leaders. Uh, it was on the uh, front page of the website. On the front page of Al Jazeera's website? Yeah, well, when you go to Al Jazeera English, uh, yeah. it was... Um, okay, Al Jazeera news. America. I go to Al Jazeera America, and... I was watching no? Al Jazeera America it, today, it, and I didn't see anything about that. Well, uh, apparently, it, 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 if it did happen, it happened... I think you were looking at the news from last year. No, nah, it couldn't have been. No, because what? Here are, the, here are the headlines on Al Jazeera. Israel continues destroying tunnels amid 12-hour uh, break in fight. Uh, international reactions to Morrissey's removal. Yeah, but President. Morrissey was the, the Muslim brother. Of no, Morrissey movie. was the guy that did all those depressing songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it looked like it was today's no, news. No, Morrissey was... Well, how the, Morrissey was... No, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, why would it be right on the front page of Al Jazeera's... Uh, oh, oh, well, you haven't cashed You're it in a year. Cash website. Maybe you year. haven't cashed it in a year. I've never looked at it before. In fact, they got him it. out of there, and they got new guys in there. Uh, and, a guy by the name of uh, 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 Al Assisi. Al is the uh, is top, top news: Hamas and Israel agree to twelve-hour truce. Right. Now, yeah. Uh, now that's sitting there. Why would they have this other thing? Well, I'm looking at the same page later? you're looking at, and it's not there. But Israel's going to continue destroying tunnels. Yeah. Iraq so threatens to fighting. sue as Kurdish uh, uh, oil tanker nears Texas. Uh, Florida court backs Docks versus Glock's law. Uh, Sheriff uh, Washington to fire destroys 300 homes. I don't see anything about the guy who used to be the president of Egypt before they got rid of the. Uh, uh, you know, it's been about a year since they got rid of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, running the uh, country, and now it's uh, this guy Al Sisi, I think, is his name. Yeah, um, it's not interesting. Guy. Why would they put that right on the front of the... Uh, because they know you're living in the last century, so they're just Kirby, you know, kind of styling the news for you. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, the news. but before, I, before we were uh, 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 taken off track here, uh, uh, it, it seems as though the Republicans, again, are talking of this word impeachment, which I hate. Yeah. Because to begin with, in this case, the impeachment is because... Uh, uh, he, he, of his, the president uh, asserting his power and uh, trying to use power he doesn't have, and so on and so forth, and yet impeachment. Being an uppity black man. Well, no, but impeachment <laughs> is is a is a device used because presidents cannot be brought into a court of law for a crime. So what is done is you impeach him. That's the indictment. Okay. Uh, simply impeaching is not, uh, that's only indicting. But you have to have some kind of criminal action. And there's no criminal action that Obama has pulled here. It's not like he's, you know, destroying the tapes and uh, uh, doing one thing or another. Uh, 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 what's, with these, what, what, what's with these Republicans? Why don't they just give up, get used to the fact that he's a president, he only has about two more years left, and, let, and then you can try and win, win, our, win our hearts and minds. He do not have that asterisk next to his name. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Josh, you got to have a comment about this. Um, well, I don't know that the Republicans necessarily were the ones saying this. Uh, the story that came out about that today was actually not based on comments from members of the Republican Party and no, 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 this was no, this was no, yet. no, this was because was, people in, within the administration right, were saying that the Republican the administration yeah. who who spoke to the Christian Science Monitors, uh, one of their annual breakfasts or whatnot, and he said that. He thinks they'll do it. Well, that's just him saying that. Well, Josh Ernest, and, and, who's the uh, press secretary, uh, um, said it. I don't know if that's who it was or yeah. not. I can't remember which he, advisor spoke. But he said that. I don't think it was Ernest, actually. Well, actually, he said he didn't think they were sincere. Right. So anyway, he goes there uh, to the Christian Science Monitor, and you know he does a talk, Q&A or whatever, and he says, I think the House is going to Dan, Dan Pfeiffer was the guy that went yeah, to him. He's a counselor right. to the president. So, yeah. He says, I think they're going to move for impeachment. 
Um, the Republicans haven't said that. That's just what he says. And then I can tell you that no later than 30 minutes after I read the story in the New York Times on my phone, yeah, um, I got three or four emails asking to raise money to fight uh, from Democratic organizations, asking to raise money to fight the company yeah, impeachment. That's, that's, so uh, I don't really think this is from the Republicans. I think this is a ploy from the Democratic Party to try and money. raise money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's well, just my opinion. I mean, that's what they well, do. Very so well yeah, well, that should make uh, Phil happy. Well, uh, last time when um, when um, uh, Sarah Palin brought it up, Democrats sent out mails. They got, I think, half a million dollars out of it. Well, you know, in the history of this country, we've only impeached what two presidents of the United States: uh, Johnson and, uh, and and Clinton. Three, right? Clinton, and Nixon. No, no we, we didn't impeach, impeach Nixon. Right. Never impeached Nixon. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, and it's something you reserve for heinous moments. That's why it was so terrible when they did it to Clinton, because, you know, somewhere along the line, your your fellow historians, Josh, are going to have to laugh their heads off when they get to this uh, asterisk called Clinton, and the reason he was impeached was because he got a blowjob. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I mean, you know, there's certainly some, uh, I mean, the Constitution can't define a certain set of circumstances for impeachment because you could never yeah. cover all possible bases. Yeah, it's pretty um, vague, high crimes and... You know, and you would leave yourself open, um, you know, to not being able to move forward with it in certain cases. So, you know, it was left pretty vague, you know. Def define for me high crimes and misdemeanors. I mean, certainly, right. if you were convicted of lying to the FBI, for example, um, which is basically what they tried to get President Clinton on, you know, that would be uh, certainly a misdemeanor or above. Yeah. So then the question becomes, but is this particular misdemeanor um, worthy of impeachment? And I think only society and citizens can judge that. I certainly think it proved to be a mistake. So our judgment was rendered probably, um, you know, it, it didn't help the Republican Party the way they thought it would. And if they tried to impeach Obama, I think it would be even worse backlash than well you know than that. yeah, that's why i say that's all reasonable that, that's a ploy to raise money yeah but i i get i get a little sick and tired of this word impeachment con constantly coming up as no, a, i do too you know uh it, it it just gets a little boring uh and of course leave it to sarah palin she'll always bring it up you know <laughs> uh, she's always looking for her next piece of publicity now she's dry is she's become a bad driver in order to get publicity uh, what, kind of news site, what? What? what kind of news site is this Al Jazeera? Now that I uh, look look up this uh, Moresi uh, removal, Mar it was updated July 4th, 2013. Can't they put something else on their page? It's not on their page. I don't know why it's on yours. I don't know, too. It's not there. I don't know, Phil. No. I don't know what you're looking at. Phil, I, we're, I all look, either. we're all... I think it's the John Birch version of... No, the, I, I, I... It was... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do this. Refresh the page. Yeah. Or I just, just... I just went on myself. It's not on there. Really? You're the cash. I, I sent you the article uh, well, on Facebook. Great. That's annoying. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, have you tried refreshing the page? Uh, sure, I'll try that. Mm-hmm. Empty the difficult. browser cache. Now yeah. what happens? Yeah. Uh, I have to go back and, into it. But, Says Hamas came to Christianity. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, they converted to Christianity now. Yeah, I so see. Are you there? Okay, yeah. Patrick. Uh, Patrick, you there? Now they're yeah. Jews. Okay. Killed Jesus. okay. What? I, I made the joke that since Hamas converted to Christianity, now they hate the Jews because they killed Jesus. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know my people. My pe you know they must know I'm a Republican, and that's why they're sending me this old news. Yeah, did it re did you bring the page back up? Yeah, I brought it up and I hit the refresh thing, and uh, I got the same uh, the same deal. Same old news. So well, it's, it's I, I under have video. Uh, it's under video, not oh, news. Oh, it's under video. Well, a lot of times when they have videos, that's years. Of, you know, they they'll they'll go back a year with uh, stuff like that. Let me go to the video page here. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, 
No. The uh, space launch system, John, is a so-called... Well, I don't want to hear Al Jazeera on the air, but uh, I didn't see it. Well, anyway, you know. All right. Well, hey, I try. <laughs> yeah, you'll try anything, even if it's wrong. <laughs> well, I went to your, your uh, favorite website for, uh, for news. And, uh, it isn't my uh, favorite it, it website. Must, for it must news. have a, a cookie or something that says, "Don't give Phil the real news." <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my favorite page for 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 uh, for, for news is uh, facialabuse.com, uh, and uh, that's uh, that's it. Uh, by the way, I wanted to ask uh, 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 Mark uh, because Mark has a. Uh, uh, by the way, for the TV people, that's what. Uh, that's what uh, uh, Patrick puts up when he has to go to the bathroom. It's Yoda holding a sign saying, Back I will be. Wait for me, you will. <laughs> anyway, Mark, uh, you, you, you did lighting and stuff, sort of stage, right? Build sets and so on? Yeah, yep. Now, I, do I, you I, light yourself for the TV, for the, for the camera here? Can Pardon? I figure out his lighting setup? <laughs> I, I think it's coming one light from his right, and he's got a reflector. Uh, to no, give I've, me I've, got a, I've got a, a little uh, lamp to my left over here, and I've got a light on the wall that's coming this way, and um, I have a light behind me that I decided to turn off because it's on a uh, uh, a fan, and it, it kind of looks like uh, i got a halo going, so I what? turned that one off. Well, your lighting is terrific, let me just yeah. say I, that. I worked on my gear yesterday, that's why I didn't... Uh, I listened to your the show yesterday, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't log in because I was working on my stuff here. I put in... I got a second monitor. I tried to take quick care of my uh, keyboard sound problem. I went through my microphone, uh, you know, settings and whatnot, uh, Trying to be a good uh, citizen panel member. It's amazing what people do to be good citizen panel members. <laughs> uh, I mean, they, really, they you know, look look at Rob. Rob's got a full studio there, and whenever he talks, it's better than my microphone. There's no question that, about it. Phil's got a cool microphone. I, I'm wearing a shirt right now that's got a microphone on it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a real good one like Phil does, but I got a T-shirt with a microphone on it. Old style, so that's a sure. Yeah, I think it's, it's a sure uh, that he's got on. Uh, that's yes. the RCA seven DX seventy six. Well, the DX best one I think of everybody that I hear, okay, is Miranda's. Yeah. Miranda's mic is just she sounds, doesn't she, Rob? Like she's coming out of a studio from somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and so do you, by the way. Um, you know, but I, 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 I just sound like I'm using this cheap little AGC, and AKG. Uh, oh, you sound great, Alex. I may go back to my old Electro Boy 635A that I bought when I was 15 years old. And the thing still works and still sounds great. That's okay. that real uh, small... Um, I know right. what that looks Here, like. Here, I'll show it's you. I'll show you. Yeah. I'm almost sure uh, that, that I know what that looks like. Is it go. like a shotgun? Uh, uh, no. This it's microphone. A, it's the classic which, mic. As I say, still works. Uh, is uh, is l literally what sixty years old? There it is, and and you saw these microphones used a lot. Yeah. Frank, yeah. I've seen concerts with Frank Sinatra where he's using them. I've seen news reports, you know, from various yeah, sure. places, and they still make this microphone. And it and, and it, news people used to love it because you could hit people over the head with it. And and <laughs> this thing has been repainted many times. And if I, in fact, let me, let me unhook, I'll, I'll let people hear what it sounds like. Hold on a second. Uh, let me. Uh, 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 well, I'm, I'm pulling out the microphone that my wife uses, and I'll just plug it in and lis listen to that. Oh, that it, sounds it's better. Clean. Isn't that it's an clean. amazing sounding microphone? It's, it's it sounds better, I have to say. It sounds, it, it's not a better mic, but yeah. it, it's I clean. Think it, it it's really clean. Yeah. Yeah. And no, no background noise. Yeah, very directional. Maybe I'll start using this mic again after yeah, all these absolutely. years. Absolutely. It sounds great. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing, uh, amazing old microphone. Uh, and, and the thing is 60 years old and still works beautifully. And you can still buy them. Uh, and, uh, 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 
what, what you should do is uh, go uh, tell the microphone company that you're doing an internet radio show with their old mic, and that'll be a good commercial for them, and maybe they'll give you some money or something. Uh, no, you, you tell the <laughs> internet radio company that you want a new mic, and uh, yeah. uh, you'll try it out and critique it. Yeah, I've been sounding echoey all night because I just realized I left my wife's microphone on, and that causes mm. a, a, a kind of a sound of the room kind of shows up. Anyway, uh, where were we? Uh, so how's the dog doing, uh, Tony? we got to check in dog news. Uh, she was good today. Yeah. She was good. She's picking up rocks a lot, though. <clears throat> but she spits them out, I guess, just because she's teething in the yard. Yeah. So yeah. basically, uh, she's been good. She just, uh, she's only a little over three months, so she's still, you know, she's still going to be doing all her stuff. She goes into the bathroom. She'll grab anything. Really. Are you ever going to get tired of this dog? Yeah, really. my mother. My mother likes when I go to work. Cause the other day when she called me, I had to pick up milk on the way home. I says, "Where's Coco?" So my mother had socks on. She goes after the socks, so she's pulling on her feet while she's talking on the phone. I'm here like, oh. She throws her treats to get her away from her feet. I guess it's the terrible two for <laughs> dogs. Know treat, get away from my socks. It's the terrible two for dogs, I guess. Yeah, but you know what I'm noticing. I never, I, I don't remember my other dog as a puppy, so mm -hmm. now it's starting to come back where, you know, they do certain things. Yeah, yeah. But I did set my, my alarm clock. I get up at 5.30 because I like to get, I get up early anyway. Yeah. But I want to be able to get her in a schedule right now. I don't want to find poop on the floor at 6.30 where I got to go around a minefield. Like, come so you're going to <laughs> yeah. wake up at 5.30 in the morning on your vacation? Well, I, I usually get up around 6.30 anyway. I'm an early riser. So I'll get up early, then I'll go back to sleep and take like an hour nap. I can't, I can't, I can't sleep in. That's about it. <laughs> Alex, is like, Alex, what time do you get up? Yeah, today? Uh, on, on a regular, do you usually sleep in or no? Well, well we last, know we went to sleep at 4 a.m. Yeah, night, right? yeah I, I got up at 11 this morning. But you probably went to sleep late. I went to bed at 4 in the morning. Oh, my God. Yeah, it, it was later than usual because I couldn't get to sleep. I finally had to take a pill and hit myself over the head with that microphone I just showed you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm on vacation, so it's nice. So I don't mind getting drunk. Yeah, yeah. So you're on vacation, but you're staying home. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can't take a vacation. I'm trying to figure out how I take how how do I take a vacation? It's called Rob. Uh, well, no, <laughs> well, I can't expect Rob to do two hours a night. You know, he's got other work to do in his life. Uh, you know, to take a vacation, you're going to have to go out your front door, and it sounds like you don't like to do that. Well, no, I mean, my wife's going well, to want me to go with her, but I just I can't figure out any way to do it. She's going to China again, to Shanghai this time. And uh, I would have liked to have gone, but it's just, you know, I mean, I've got this thing i got to run. How about so. remote? Can you remote it? No, not unless I want to get arrested in China. <laughs> uh, because if they find out I'm doing uh, programming... From there, and don't have some kind of permission to do it. Uh, you're you're in a lot of trouble over there. I hope that'll make a good episode. But you know what's interesting? I am I am glad to say, however, that I I get these uh, charts of uh, how many people listen every day and and uh, where they're listening from, and we do have some listeners in China. Uh, so apparently, they're not blocking us in China. Yet. Yet. <laughs> uh, uh, but they're not blocking us in China. And, um, uh, in fact, I, 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 you people who are all around the world listening to this live, uh, in fact, I could look right now and just tell you exactly where some people are from. Um, oh, we certainly slowly get more people again. Uh, let me see here. Uh, we have Canada and, uh, let's see here, where, where, where else? Jim, probably. That's probably, it's Jim. Uh, and we have, uh, let's see here, mm -hmm. Hong Kong. There's some people in huh? Hong Kong. Hong yeah. Kong. Somebody What's from China? Hong Kong is listening to us right now. Why don't you call us, Skype us? Mm. Oh, wait a minute. We have to have a full, we have a minion here. Yeah, we have a if full somebody, house. If somebody comes from Hong Kong, I'll, uh, Me yeah, too. I'll hang up. Yeah. We'll uh, have some people from there. Yeah. Well, we're going to make some room for them because we're both beat and we're going to, we are on out tonight, so if somebody can call in, feel free. Okay, well, you know, it's it's Friday night, and you're finally at home with your wife instead of in some seedy hotel room with some hooker. Exactly. Uh, oh. oh, you're really beat. 
<laughs> By the way, and and I, I wait, a minute, wait, a minute, wait, 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 hold on a second. I didn't have that up. Uh, let me put that full screen, and you can show people what you were holding up. Look at that. Oh, is that? Uh, Let me know what they'll be up to it's, afterwards. It's uh, like leather on one side and wood on yeah. the other. No, oh, really? And and where did you buy that? Oh, it was a gift. He he, he works for a furniture company. Oh, no, no, no. This was different. I was, I was well, then there, then there's also there's also there's also Patrick's picture which he's put up again yeah, of a ball one. gag in the shape of the uh, the ball being in the shape of the Death Star. Yes, huh? Well, we'll bring out the ball gag next time. Oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, listen, you two, have a have a nice weekend, okay? Have a good weekend. Good okay, good thanks. Bye bye. Good night. Um, so, uh, what do you what do you think? Uh, let me ask Josh this, uh, since uh, he's as good one to ask as any. Was the number one story this week? Oh, the story of the week's probably been. Uh huh. Well, between the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the airplane, yeah, I'm not sure which has got. They've been devoting probably equal amount of time to both in the morning, but I, I'll just choose the Israeli-Palestinian because Michael Bloomberg went and he's going to fix the problem. Y yeah, he went there. So yeah. I'll oh, oh no, one. no. You want to know who I heard today has a real opinion on that whole thing? And God, it's changing my mind. Uh, uh, was Joan Rivers? Oh well, between yeah. the two of them, if I were Hamas, hey, I, I asked her. I'm, I'm, down run the other I'm one of those. Best. I'm one of those entertainment it's shows. Like audio, but I wasn't sure we we're allowed to because it's what? a TMZ exclusive. What? The the Joan Rivers audio. I use it anyway. Let that guy sue us. <laughs> you, know, I mean, you know what happens? <laughs> you, you, you you use it, but wait a minute, David. David's having yeah, David uh, showed us. He, yeah, he, show, which, he, he had, flashed us. He yeah, flashed, flashed us. us. Yeah. So then he left. David, <laughs> are you there, David? Hello. There he Hello, David. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, we were saying what was the uh, most important story of the week. What do you think was the most important story of the week? For me, the most important story is that my friend Dan Mayer is back. And he's like a co-host again. <laughs> the most important story for me right now. And many people I... on Facebook are texting me right now, and they don't like it. Then look, look, look. I'm sorry to be a little bit upset. My my leg hurts very very bad. Uh, so it's an important story for me. But, but go but, ahead. But, but look at him. <laughs> look, look look at David. Doesn't he look like something with his hair being tousled like that, and he hasn't got a shirt on right now, and he kind of looks a little in pain from the legs, I guess, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. was in yeah. terrible pain 30 minutes ago, so I woke up, I decided, but, you know, to put you on, my but favorite doesn't he, man, doesn't, Alex Bennett. Yeah. And suddenly there's also, there's, there is also Dan, like your co-host. <laughs> So it should, be, it, should be, it should be called Dance Mambo sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm sorry that I'm a little bit upset, but I'm not the only one, believe me. Mm. Anyway, like conspiracy. If, if he could stand up, he could do five minutes of open mic. Oh, <laughs> hey, easily, easily. But, can, he, but here's what I'm saying. Anything, hey? I'm so, I'm, I'm really like on pills. You know, yeah, well, well, but, but, yeah, but look, I want to listen, yeah, well, look to at him program. though. He looks. I don't need he, to listen. Huh? He yeah, looks. He, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like I can watch Rain Man, the movie that Dustin Hoffman. You know, so please. He's gonna go to Kmart. Uh, but what I'm saying is, because of the way you look right now, you kind of look like the picture of a guy. They say. But he was so quiet, and he lived next door, and he, he never <laughs> talked he to anybody. Guns. And, uh, and then he killed those 15 kids. No, I, I, I would have to kill myself, you know. I like that. He's a nice guy. I love that guy. But so I need to listen. Yeah. I mean, you kind of look to me like maybe what Bruno <laughs> Richard Hopman looked like just before he kidnapped the Lindbergh baby. <laughs> and My mother would probably, I'd come home from work, he'd be in the kitchen. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, oh, what? I could see my mother gets people on the phone, like a survey, she just talks to everybody, she says, hang up. 
I could see you talking to him. Uh, talking to David. Well, we, we love David. We love David. I like him. I'm joking. David, David, David has a great sense of humor, even I though it's late. Too. I love you too. I just don't need to listen. Eh, eh, <laughs> me, yeah, you know. Oh, look. Can, can I say something, David? Hey, hey, David, hey, David. Hey. David. I, if, if anybody should be bothered by anybody hijacking the show, it would be me. Okay? Uh, and Dan doesn't ever bother me that way. You know. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, go ahead then. His voice is highly. I like that. Uh, By the way, Mark Beaumont, uh, this is what I have I to put like up you. with. I have to put up with people yelling at each other. This is like it's. This is like the most dysfunctional family I've ever had. You can't get rid to be of a good citizen panel member. You at least should be wearing a shirt, huh? If he do a Thanksgiving show that we're the dysfunctional Thanksgiving family, yeah. yeah. Hey, if he wants better panel members, he's going to have to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, it, uh, well, it does get sometimes. With, uh, wait, wait, hold on a second, uh, Josh. With everybody, though, where sometimes it gets to be a problem is. It doesn't come across on the broadcast, but it comes across on Skype that when you're talking on here and someone else starts talking, even if it's just a small comment while you're talking, it kind of cuts out right in your ear and you yeah. don't know what happened and you're like, are they hearing me? Is someone else talking? Am I? And then you stop and it, it gets really awkward if people keep interjecting. Although I am amazed, I'm, 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 I'm amazed, stop. At, even, I'm amazed that it works as well as it does. No, it does. You I know? just mean, that's when it that's when it gets to be a problem with stuff like that because then you don't you don't know what's going on you then you can't hear and then you're like what the fuck did everyone say and you know well sometimes yeah, when you're when you're yeah, talking yeah. you you can't hear me talking to you and so i i i have right. to kind of like have learned to, i, I kind of have to jump in when you pause or whatever so that you then hear me uh but uh, you know otherwise you can jump anytime alex i don't mind you, you I, know? I i know you don't but it's my co-host you don't like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, wait a minute. You're worried about your legs and you're smoking? I have to. What do you mean you have to? Yeah. Do you, I, do you ever I stop? Don't have my, I don't have my weed. I run out of weed, so I need to smoke my cigar. What is weed? Yeah. Marijuana. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some good marijuana from, from Denver. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I get some good marijuana from Mendocino. Oh. Oh, yeah. 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 The Denver stuff, Denver, that's a, Denver yeah. stuff, that's already corporate shit. You know what I'm saying? You know. They're still the, they're still working the plantations up in Mendocino. Yes, Phil. Uh, to uh, ask uh, about Josh's question, uh, either uh, Alex or Rob, is there such a thing as half duplex and full duplex on Skype? Is that maybe why he's only hearing part of the conversation? Well, there. So. Huh? I don't think there's half and full duplex on Skype. No, there isn't. But uh, uh, I, I'm looking at uh, uh, the preferences right now, and uh, it, 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 you should uncheck automatically adjust microphone settings. Uh, you should never have that checked. Uh, Why is that? Because what that does is that will will mute you if you're talking, or mute somebody else when they're talking. So it's it's best for you to just Mine be. Is checked. You, yours is checked. Yeah. Oh, I'll well, uncheck. if you uncheck it, you you might be a little. Yeah. Better. I mean that's that's the only problem I experience, and it doesn't matter if it's Dan or anybody. If they start trying to interject, yeah, you know, small sentences into what you're saying, it breaks up. You know, like I said, on the broadcast it goes out fine, but on the Skype, yeah, it it messes it up, and then you know you don't know what to do. And I I know that sometimes if I'm trying to make a point, mm -hmm. I can go on for a while, but then when I'm done, if if people will notice I'm done, and then I'll stop, and then I'll let it go all the way around. And I mean, I might say a lot in one chunk, and then I might not speak again for sometimes unless it's some kind of back and forth. I might not say anything again for fifteen or twenty minutes. So. It just sometimes it just messes you up and you don't know, you know, yeah. what you know what's up. What's well, going we're, we're we're still getting the the kinks out of this. I mean, I really wish that uh, we did so well with this format that I could actually hire some people to actually create a program, just especially for what we do. And uh, but we're we're having to work with existing technology right now. 
So and I just unchecked my mic. Uh, does that stop the uh, the other other people from cutting out? Uh, probably. Can you hear me? Okay. Start talking yeah. when I'm talking. So okay. I'll can talk you hear me talk. talking? Yeah. Uh, no, you actually cut out when I'm. Talking. Oh really? Oh, anyway. Right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, it's inherent to the Skype. It's nothing pray you can do about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, we, we, you know, we can send a man to the moon. I love that when people say that. We can send a man to the moon, but we can't create a good t program here. We sent a man to the moon 45 years ago. <laughs> you know, we still haven't solved certain problems. We've sent a man to the moon, but we can't send a man to the moon. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. Um, um, so I, I guess we have all agreed that the number one story was Gaza. Yeah. You know. Uh, because really, the shooting down of the plane was actually the week before that. Uh, and and uh, how do you feel, uh, just quickly, uh, to kind of, I, I don't want to uh, rehash everything, but Phil, uh, the, uh, how, what is your uh, your excuse for why the, uh, why the Israelis seem to be bombing the UN? Uh, well, uh, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is I've been uh, looking at different news sources for uh, the Palestinian position, yeah. Uh, as in comparison to the Israeli position. So today I watched something by Marco Rubio and then uh, there was a, a son of, a, uh, of an Israeli general that had a different take on uh, the reasons why uh, the bombing is going on in Gaza right now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at both sides. I don't hear this, uh, this, this the uh, Palestinian side very often. Uh, and you know now I'm I'm questioning uh, you know exactly what's been going on there. I I need more information. But as far as uh, the uh, UN bombing, uh, this wasn't the first one, was it? Uh, there was there was another one a couple of days earlier. But this yeah. one this one happened to be particularly horrendous because this particular UN facility was being used. People would go to this UN facility because they felt it was the one place they could be safe. Yeah, where uh, uh, was it? A hundred people were injured. I and, think, uh, uh, yeah, more than, killed. Yeah, more than that. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's about time it stopped. Well, it listen. I think that the world uh, uh, sympathy is veering away from Israel and towards the people in Gaza because they just everybody kind of feels that uh, these people in Gaza they can't get out. You know, they're yeah, all. They're, I understood that uh, in that 2012. Uh, uh, issue that you were talking about that they were supposed to be able to have passage out of Gaza yeah. uh, and I, I don't know what that means as far as passage is it you know a guided tour or, or whatever but uh, they're you know they need to get out of there people should be able to get out of their country period yeah. you know people should be able to travel and uh, you know I'm not so sure if it's uh, an Israeli land grab and this is the way uh, oh, there's been a land been grab. Happening. There's been a land grab going on by Israel for the longest time, in which they've gone out to these uh, uh, these outposts. What do they call them? These uh, uh, settlements. settlements. And Although, they, and they seem to be increasing those settlements and slowly pushing out the Palestinian populace well, that lives in those areas, I and understand. has increased the size of Israel. Right, but they they say that they are doing it in response to conquered land, and you know if they had a war and they were attacked and they conquered this land. They should be uh, uh, allowed to keep it. That's well, I, I heard a very interesting fact the other day, uh, which I didn't realize, and, and I, 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 it could be I got the wrong information or I read it wrong because you read stuff wrong all the time, like yeah. reading last year's Al Jazeera. <laughs> um, uh, Thanks for Firefox. But, but it, Israel, Israel uh, doesn't have a constitution, and so therefore they make up the laws as they go. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. And that they also are doing the same thing with borders. That they keep trying to push that border, push the borders, push the borders. Uh, they want to get. They would like to get bigger. I mean, if they had their way, they'd take all the land right next to them. Uh, and and so a lot of this has to do with that as well. Well, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to look uh, objectively at at both sides uh, in order to come to a conclusion. I, you know, I can say. You know, right now that it's it's difficult uh, to to come to a conclusion based on the information I have. Uh, so you know, when I'm well, asked, but uh, don't listen to Marco Rubio because he needs Jews to get elected. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, this is true, but I, you know, I liked what he had to say, but I I also appreciated looking at the other at the other side of it. Yeah. Well, look, it it it, it is a shame all the way around because 
Anytime there's a war anywhere on this planet, who gets hurt the worst? The innocents, the children, the old ladies, the old men, uh, the non-combatants, the civilians. Always the ones. This we, is a no-win situation. Well, I mean, when we went into Iraq, uh, 100,000 civilians killed as a result of what we did over there. Uh, you know, if people want to fight wars, I don't mind armies fighting armies. Okay, go have at it, but don't don't involve the rest of the people. They should. Well, uh, it's kind of like the mob. You know, they've got this uh, this code of conduct that you don't uh, you don't kill family. Well, regardless of the amount of missiles that Israel is able to deflect, uh, it's still, uh, they, they need, the ha Hamas government needs to stop lobbing missiles into Israel. And, uh, you know, they're, they're lobbing missiles in and they're... They will, they, they will as soon as Israel says, hey, we will allow uh, free passage of goods and services in and out of, uh, in and out of uh, Gaza. But they, they, they can't, the Israel, Israel, well, they Israel just turned it down again. And it can't, like they they turned down it. Kerry's proposal today. Yeah, but uh, not the Egyptian. But the, the, uh, it looks like uh, they didn't need free passage as long as they had the tunnels. Yeah. Now that the tunnels have been destroyed, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden they need the, uh, they need the embargo to be uh, lifted and they need passage because they don't have uh, the avenues of getting goods and services in and out anymore uh, yeah. through their tunnel system. Right, right. It sounds like you're softening a little bit, Phil. Yeah. Uh, he is. No, soft, yeah. I'm trying to understand. You know, uh, uh, there's always two sides to every story, and uh, just because I uh, emotionally support the Israeli uh, uh, issues. Uh, doesn't mean I shouldn't understand uh, the other side of oh, the Well, Phil, I, I, think, I think the thing that you have to get used to is that something I came to terms with years ago as a Jew, that Israel is a political entity and has nothing to do with being Jewish, okay? And so therefore, as a, as a country, they can make political mistakes. Uh, they can Everyone make political can make errors in judgment. They can even be cruel and unusual as a government. Okay, and it has nothing to do with whether they're Jewish or not. Uh, I understand. You know? Although I uh, feel more, I identify more with the Zionists than I would with uh, uh, the uh, group that you identified as the the Bundes. The Bundes? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I identify with them because I, I spent time with them, and I they were some of the bravest people I've ever met in my life. But the, the point, in fact, is, and forget about that part of it. I also am sympathetic to the Palestinians because they are Semitic brothers, you know, and that's something we should start to remember. You know, they—they. Uh, they, uh, I, I, I love I it when some the I, Palestinians. I love it when this idiot in uh, in uh, in in Israel the other day uh, said, uh, "Oh, this guy is anti-Semitic who happened to be a Muslim." Well, he happens to be I, Semitic know, himself. I don't believe it's the Palestinians that we've got a problem with. It's Hamas and uh, Hezbollah. Well, I mean, the Palestinians are people. Hamas and Hezbollah are political entities, just like Israel is a political but, entity. But as, uh, as uh, Rick pointed out, Hezbollah is supported by the Iranians, and the Iranians would like to do nothing but uh, hassle Israel. I think I heard somewhere that Hezbollah, though, is, uh, is Shia, mm -hmm. and uh, Iran is Sunni. And, uh, and, well, no, and, that and, was the uh, uh, the the uh, Hamas was uh, the uh, yeah, are, are the are the Shia. Yeah. Okay, um, uh, according to Rick. According to Rick, yeah, and he's he, he corrected and he's me. gone off to be get his ass paddled. Yeah, well, <laughs> he corrected me the other day when I yeah. uh, said that it was a uh, Iranian uh, uh, Hamas uh, association. Yeah, uh, Josh, uh, uh, the whole thing in Gaza is still kind of boring you in a way. Well, it's just basically unchanged. I mean, I do know, uh, I, I don't know that I agree that if the Israelis conquered land, they should be able to keep it. If the land conquered came in military action that was, uh, you know, basically improper. Um, well, so, well, there is, there, we is to, there is international law, I believe, that right. conquered land cannot be kept. Well, that may be, but I'm, I guess what I was saying is if we conquer Canada militarily, um, for no particular reason, does that mean we can 
you know, we should get to keep it. I mean, just because we could do it. So I'm, I'm saying you don't have to get on to that. But well, you know, you know, I, quite that, frankly, you know, we've never picked a war with Canada, and I think we should because I think it's a war we can win. Right? I don't know. <laughs> so, but you know, the the two things about that though is, I mean, if you know, I I watched some reports earlier, and mm -hmm. you see reports in in Palestine, and it yeah. looks like a war zone. And then they'll go to uh, Jerusalem and they'll do a live shot from the street. And there are people going in and out shopping and buying clothes and drinking at the cafes. And I mean, so it's like two different worlds. So you can't hardly blame the Palestinians for feeling the way they do. And 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 to top it all off, the Israelis have returned to their age old practice of, you know, for instance, finding out that Phil's brother is a is a militant even though phil isn't and and doesn't even like his brother anymore and doesn't agree with him but they capture his brother and find out uh about phil and then they go to phil's house and they throw him out on the street and they demolish his home and then they keep right yeah. on moving to to punish the family so by the way just a quick little side note that i heard the other day if you look back at this conflict you know we were talking the other night about how you have to keep looking back and back and back and if you keep looking back and back and back there's always something happening. Like these three kids who were kidnapped and killed were in retaliation for, I think, another three uh, uh, Palestinians who were killed. So it's just always trying to, you know, get even with what has happened. Somebody at some point has to say, stop. Right. And that's it. The, the news can be very myoptic. You know, when they choose to show uh, that life in Tel Aviv has not changed, but life in Gaza is is one big uh, uh, mess. Uh, you know, you can aim your camera in such a way that well, uh, yeah. But up, in, up until now, they haven't been pointing their cameras at Gaza. They haven't been saying, "Hey, look at what's happening to these people." Up until well, now, it's been, "Oh, poor Israel with the bombs being lobbed into." Them. That, I suppose that's fine, but you you have uh, you have the uh, press secretary for the Israeli Prime Minister and Michael Bloomberg on CNN uh, yesterday or the day before absolutely saying everything in the city is fine. You can fly here, you can drive around, you can go shopping. The Israeli government is telling you that. So it's not just the news media. That's the Israeli government insisting that everything is hunky-dory in Jerusalem. Come on I over say, and see the sights. Can I say one more thing? Sure. Why not give the same anti-missile system to the Gaza uh, uh, resistance as the Israelis have, so that it neutralizes uh, missiles from either side. Anyway, hey, listen. I hear the music. It's over. God, it been uh, it went fast tonight, and and we were all over the place with all kinds of stuff. Most of it fun. We just got serious in the last like half hour, uh, but uh, nothing wrong with that either. Mark Thorner. I got to interrupt. Mark Thorner, <laughs> thanks for coming back. Uh, great to have you back on again. Josh, you too. Phil, of course. Uh, Dan Meyer, shut the fuck up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, by the way, we've lost David Hadjik, but thanks to him. Mark Beaumont, always great to have you around. A newcomer and a regular, and good to have you here. Patrick, what can I say? you Patrick. You know, you're our, you're our hood ornament of the Great American Broadcast. Uh, Rob, thank you. Tony, thank you. Thank you all for being with me tonight. Bye bye. Okay. Yeah, nice weekend. Uh, yeah, you too. And that's it, uh, actually, folks. Uh, we uh, kind of call it quits here. Uh, and as always, and we like to always say it, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay?